ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد So in the Prophet's prayer described, we now got to the second raka'ah. After going through all of the details of the first raka'ah and what is supposed to be done, we now arrived at the second unit of the prayer, the second raka'ah. So as Shaykh al says, ثُمَّ يُكَبِّرُ فَيَقُومُ إِلَى الرَّكَعَةِ الثَّانِيَةِ على صدور قدميه معتمدا على ركبتيه بدون جلوس This is the first thing where there is a difference of opinion again that after you finish the first raka'ah and then you've done your second prostration and now you're going to get up to the second raka'ah when you come out of the second prostration then do you sit for a moment and then get up or do you come out of the second prostration and go straight up? That is the difference of opinion. So when you're in prostration, your second prostration in the first raka'ah, when you come out of your second prostration, you say, Allahu Akbar, and do you just get straight up? Or do you come out of the second prostration and sit down for a moment and then go up, stand up? As Shaykh al says, that you get straight up. When you come out of the second prostration, you don't sit down. You go straight up. He says, هذا هو المشهور من مذهب الإمام أحمد رحمه الله. That this is what is commonly mentioned in the madhab of Al Imam Ahmed. In the madhab of Al Imam Ahmed, that is what is commonly mentioned. But there is an opinion, of course. That you come out of the second prostration and sit momentarily. Then stand up. فقيل بل يجلس ثم يقوم معتمدا على يديه كما هو المشهور من مذهب الإمام الشافعي. So on the second opinion, you come out of the second prostration and sit momentarily. Then you stand up after that using your hands. And there are differences in the sunnah about how you use your hands. Some of them say they are like fists and then you put them on the ground and push yourself up. Others they say just normal flat on the ground and push yourself up. So that is the opinion of Imam Shafi'i that you sit for a moment. Then with your hands you push yourself up to stand up. وَهَذِهِ الْجِلْسَةِ مشهورة عند العلماء باسم وهو جلسة الاستراحة وقد اختلف العلماء رحمهم الله في مشروعيتها So that small sitting is differed over between the scholars When you come out of the second prostration do you go straight up to the second raka'ah or do you sit and then go up to the second raka'ah the Shaykh says that is differed over. And that small sitting, they call it Jilsatul Istiraha, the sitting of rest. That you come out of the second prostration and you sit a momentary rest. Then you stand up after that. منهم من يرى أنها مستحبة مطلقاً 
Some scholars, they say it is a mustahab thing, that you're supposed to do it every time. It's a mustahab thing that you do every time. فَإِذَا قُمْتَ إِلَى الثَّانِيَةِ أَوْ إِلَى الرَّابِعَةِ فَاجْلِسْ ثُمَّ انْهَضْ مُعْتَمِدًا عَلَى يَدَيْكِ So when you're going to stand up to the second raka'a or you're going to stand up to the fourth raka'a then in that case you do that small sitting as a mustahab action, meaning an action that is recommended a sunnah to do. Imma ala sifat al ajini in sahha al hadith fi dhalika, au ala ghayri hadhi al sifat inda man yara an hadith al ajn dhaif. So either you do that with your hands in fists as though you are doing some, uh, uh, kneading some dough or with your hands out as normal. That's one opinion that it is a sunnah, a mustahab action to do that. Another opinion is that it is not mustahab at all. It is not mustahab at all to do that. And another opinion, there's a third opinion, which is in ihtajta. So the first opinion is it is mustahab to sit down momentarily after the second prostration and then get up to the second raka'ah and it will be the same thing after the second prostration in the third raka'ah when you're now going to get up to the fourth raka'ah that you sit down momentarily some scholars say that is mustahab others they say it is not mustahab at all and the third opinion is they say إِنْ اِحْتَجْتَ إِلَيْهَا كَمَ شَقَّةِ النُّهُوضِ عَلَى صُدُورِ قَدَمَيْكَ لِضَعَفْ أَوْ كِبْرْ أَوْ مَرَضْ أَوْ مَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّكَ تَجْلِسْ ثُمَّ تَنْهَضْ وَإِذَا لَمْ تَحْتَجْ إِلَيْهَا فَلَا تَجْلِسْ The third opinion is they say if you have a need to sit down momentarily before getting up then you can do it. But if you do not have any need to do that, then you don't do it. For example, if somebody is old in age, they are weak, or they have an illness, and their body is weak, so they cannot stand straight up from the prostration in one movement. They need to come up from the prostration, sit momentarily, then make another movement to stand up, so they break up the process of standing up from the prostration to standing up into those two movements. From the prostration to the sitting position, then from the sitting position to the standing position. So they say you only sit if there's a need. If you're old in age and you can't do it directly, or you have some illness or some problem and you cannot do it directly, then you can do it in the two movements, sitting down and then standing up. The evidence they use for that, they say, They say that this particular sitting, that particular sitting, does not have any dua that goes with it. When you come out of the second prostration, and now you're sitting down, there is no dua to be read in that sitting. And neither do you do another takbir to get up from the sitting to the standing. So it's as though there's nothing to be said with that sitting. Nothing to be said, nothing to be mentioned. 
And so they said the sitting isn't an integral part of the prayer. It is not an actual section of the prayer that you have to do. There's nothing to read there. There's nothing to say there. So they say it's not an integral, a core uh, part of the prayer, an actual part of the prayer. And that you only therefore do it if there's some necessity and you cannot make one direct movement to stand up. فَلَمَّا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهَا تَكْبِيرٌ قَبْلَهَا وَلَا بَعْدَهَا وَلَا ذِكْرٌ فِيهَا دَلَّ عَلَى أَنَّهَا غَيْرٌ مَقْصُودَةٌ فِي ذَاتِهَا لِأَنَّ كُلَّ رُكْنٍ مَقْصُودٌ فِي ذَاتِهِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ لَا بُدَّ فِيهِ مِنْ ذِكْرٍ مَشْرُوعٍ So every part of the prayer that is an integral part of the prayer has something to say in it. There is something to be read, something to be said. In all of those integral parts of the prayer. However, if there is nothing to be read, nothing to be said, then that indicates it is not an integral part of the prayer. It's not an actual aspect of the prayer. So that's what they say about this sitting, that there's nothing to read in it, there's nothing to say in it, there's no dhikr, there's no takbir. You don't say Allahu Akbar again from that sitting position to stand up. And so they say it is not, it is not an actual part of the prayer and it is only done where someone has some need or necessity to have to do it. قالوا ويدل على ذلك أيضا أن في حديث مالك بن الحويرث رضي الله عنه أنه يعتمد على يدي والاعتماد على اليدين لا يكون غالبا إلا من حاجة وثقل بالجسم لا يتمكن معه من النهوض they have another evidence, and that is the hadith of Malik ibn al-Hawarith, radiyallahu anhu, where it says that he then leaned on his hands. And leaning on the hands would indicate that there is some need for that. That may be uh, due to the body weight or due to some... Uh, uh, old age or, or the way that your body weight is uh, along those lines that you need to then push down and put some pressure on your hands to the ground to be able to get up. So they say this all indicates that sitting is only there as a need, not as something which is a sunnah or mustahab. So they say, إِنِ احْتَجْتَ إِلَيْهَا فلا تكلف نفسك في النهوض من السجود إلى القيام رأسا. That if you're unable to go from the prostration straight up to standing in one movement, you're not able to do that, then in that case you come out of the prostration and just sit, then make your movement to stand up, if you are in need of that. And if you're not in need of that, then you should make one flowing movement from the prostration straight to standing up without sitting down. وهذا هو مختاره صاحب المغني عبد الله بن أحمد بن قدامة معروفا بالموفق وهو من كابر أصحاب الإمام أحمد وهو اختيار بن القيم. So uh, from the madhab of Imam Ahmad, it seems to indicate there is no sitting. You go straight up if you're able. And that is also the choice of Imam Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Shaykh al says though, to say that this is something not legislated altogether, he says that is a weak opinion as far as I can see. Because there are authentic narrations about doing that sitting before standing up. For example, in Al-Bukhari, from Abu Huraira, radiyallahu anhu, 
ثم يكبر حين يسجد ثم يكبر حين يرفع رأسه that he would do the takbir when going into the prostration and he would do the takbir when raising his head from it and also ثم اقرأ ما تيسر معك من القرآن ثم اركع حتى تطمئن راكعا ثم ارفع حتى تعتدل قائما ثم اسجد حتى تطمئن ساجدا ثم ارفع حتى تطمئن جالسا ثم اسجد حتى تطمئن ساجدا ثم افعل ذلك في صلاتك كلها All of these narrations here in this section they are talking about that second prostration and then doing the takbir and then coming up from that second prostration and many of these narrations they talk about that subject and the bottom line is there is a difference of opinion as to whether you're supposed to do that small sitting and then stand up or whether you stand up directly from it so now that you have stood up and you are now in your second rak'ah. You are now standing up to start your second rak'ah. In this second rak'ah now, you do not do the opening du'a, the istiftah. You don't say subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, that section, or the others that you may know. You don't do that when you're now on your second rak'ah. You begin the second rak'ah without that. So if you don't begin with that, if you don't begin with, for example, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, then perhaps where you begin is after that. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, etc. So perhaps you begin with, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim, from there. But even that is differed over between the scholars. Whether you have to say A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajeem at the beginning of the second rak'ah. The scholars, they differed. Some of them said فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَرَى أَنَّهُ يَتَعَوَّذْ فِي كُلِّ رَكَعَةٍ بِنَاءً عَلَىٰ أَنَّ قِرَاءَةَ الصَّلَاةِ كُلِّ رَكَعَةٍ مُسْتَقِلَّ عَنِ الْأُخْرَىٰ some of the scholars, they say, every raka'ah you begin from there, from a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim meaning second, third, fourth raka'ah. That's where you start it from when you come up. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. That's where you start from. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Many of the scholars, they have that opinion because they say every raka'ah is an independent raka'ah. And so you begin with A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim in every independent raka'ah. وَعَلَى كُلِّ حَالٍ فَإِنَّنِي لَا أَعْلَمْ فِي ذَلِكَ سُنَّةٍ تُفَصِّلُ بَيْنَ الْقَوْلَيْنِ وَلَكِنْ إِذَا تَعُوَّذَ فِي الرَّكَعَةِ الثَّانِيَةِ وَالثَّالِثَةِ وَالرَّابِعَةِ فَلَا حَرَجَ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا بَأْسٍ وَإِنْ تَرَكَ فَلَا حَرَجَ عَلَيْهِ الشيخ الثيمين says I don't know any definitive evidence either way. So in the second raka'ah, if you begin with A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim onwards, that's okay. And if you miss that and just begin with Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim without A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim, that's okay too. The Shaykh says, I don't know any specific evidence highlighting that one or the other has to be done. In Sahih Muslim from the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا نهض من الركعة الثانية استفتح القراءة بالحمد لله رب العالمين ولم يسكت So this opinion says in fact not even the Bismillah you don't even need to do that according to the opinion you can just begin with الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم you don't need to say A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim at all. In the second, third and fourth raka'ah. According to one opinion, in those ones you just begin with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen onwards. 
But there is that opinion that says you could start with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So you have those two opinions. In this hadith of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ, when he used to get up for the second raka'ah, it says he would start with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. No A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim in the second, third and fourth raka'ah. Also, like you remember from the etiquette of the prayer, is that the second raka'ah is slightly shorter than the first raka'ah. That your recitation, the surah that you read in the first raka'ah is a bit longer compared to what you read in the second raka'ah. So now then, the second raka'ah is done exactly the same way as the first raka'ah, all the rest of it, until now you come out of the second prostration. Now you're not going to stand up. If you are coming out of the second prostration, in your second raka'ah, it means now you're going to sit down to do your tashahud. Even if the prayer is three raka'at or four raka'at, you're still going to do your tashahud now after the second raka'at. Then you can get up and do your third raka'at or then your fourth as well after that. Or if it's just a two raka'at prayer, that's it. So now assuming we're doing a three or four raka'at prayer, then after that second raka'at, you are now going to sit down to do the first tashahud. So the Shaykh says, ثُمَّ يَجْلِسُ لِلْتَّشَهُّدِ بَعْدَ الرَّكَعَتَيْنِ كَجُلُوسِهِ كَجُلُوسِهِ بَيْنَ سَجْدَتَيْنِ فِي كَيْفِيَةِ الْيَدَيْنِ Then the person sits down to do the tashahud, just like he sat down in between the two prostrations. How we described your sitting, right foot is propped up, left foot is underneath, Hands on the thighs or towards the end, near the knees. You sit in that same way again. Put your hands on your thighs. And then it says in Al-Bukhari that you then read At-Tahiyyatu Lillahi والصلوات والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله That is the تشهد التحيات لله والصلوات والطيبات السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله What's the translation there? معاذ, translation, what is it? So all the compliments and Best regards and and good things are due to Allah. And then, peace be upon you, O Prophet, and Allah's mercy and blessings be upon you. Peace be upon you, O Prophet, and mercy and blessings of Allah upon you. And then, peace be upon us and the righteous servants of Allah. And I testify that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And I testify that Muhammad is, the, is his servant and his messenger. That is the tashahud. And the meaning of that in a bit more detail. At-tahiyyatu. Qala ahlul ilm. At-tahiyya kullu lafzin yu'azzamu bihi al-muhayya. Fama'ana at-tahiyyatu lillah. Ithan jami'u ta'zimat lillah azza wa jal. At-tahiyyatu, in English they might say greetings. What was the word there? Uh, compliments. Compliments. Compliments or greetings. They may use that word for at-tahiyyatu lillah. But the meaning of it, 
compliments or greetings. The meaning of it is a type of praise for Allah. At-tahiyyatulillah. Meaning everything that indicates the greatness of Allah. That's the compliments. The compliments of praise for Allah. At-tahiyyatulillah. Compliments of praise to Allah. That Allah deserves and are specific to Allah. As-salawat. The prayers. Then that would be that the prayers are for Allah. Meaning your five daily prayers, the Jumu'ah prayer, the Witr prayer, the Nafal prayers, all of those are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was salawat, attahiyyatu lillahi was salawat. The compliments of praise are for Allah and the prayers. The prayers meaning the five daily prayers, the Jumu'ah prayer, the Nafal prayer, the Witr prayer, all of the prayers are for Allah. What tayyibat. All of the good things, at-tayyibat, all of the good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is attributed with and all of the good things that we do, then they are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like it mentions in a hadith, إِنَّ اللَّهَ طَيِّبٌ لَا يَقْبَلُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tayyib. And does not accept, except the tayyib things, meaning the good things. فَكُلُّ طَيِّبٍ مِّن قَوْلٍ وَفِعْلٍ وَصْفٍ فَإِنَّهُ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلٍ So every statement and action of goodness, then that is being attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you say, As-salamu alayka ayyuha nabi All Peace and blessings be upon the Prophet ﷺ. Peace and safety. And As-Salam. As-Salam is one of the names of Allah. You can say Abdus salam As-Salam. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in this section in the prayer, you're not talking about one of the names of Allah though. In this section of the prayer, As-Salamu alayka. Ayyuhan Nabi, we're not talking about the name of Allah. Here it's the linguistic meaning of uh, safety and peace be upon you. There is one point here, many people they say that when you say As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi Peace and safety be upon you, O messenger They say that is a proof that the messenger is alive Because you're talking to him saying As-salamu alayka Peace and safety be upon you, O Messenger. As-salamu alayka. Indicating they say that the Messenger is alive and you're talking to him, addressing him directly, second person. How do we answer this doubt that they use to try and say that the Messenger is still alive and you are directly addressing him in your prayer? He is listening to you. We say... إن خطاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بهذا مستثنى من قول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم إن هذه الصلاة لا يصلح فيها شيء من كلام الآدميين. That this address to the messenger is an exception from the hadith where the prophet said that this prayer uh, it is not suitable to add in any speech of the person into it. The scholars, they said, when a person uses that statement in Arabic, indicating second person, peace be upon you, O messenger, if you were to do that addressing anyone other than Allah or the messenger, then your prayer would be uh, invalidated. Because that means you're talking to someone. 
That would mean then you're talking to someone if you are addressing someone. You're talking to someone and that's impermissible. Your prayer would become invalid. But if you are talking to Allah or the Messenger, addressing Allah or the Messenger, then that does not invalidate your prayer. لو دخل عليك رجل نعم. Secondly, how could that still be the case though that you are addressing the Messenger and he is absent? You're praying here, the Messenger isn't here. He isn't here. He isn't hearing you. Then why are you directly addressing the Messenger? Assalamu alayka. And he has died. How can you use the second person pronoun? We say, Anna mukhatabatana iyahu sawfa tunqalu ilayhi. That this dua that we are making for the Messenger saying, Assalamu alayka. Peace be upon you, O Messenger. The Messenger isn't alive, he's not here, he's not hearing us. But that statement of us addressing it to the Messenger will be taken to him. It will be transmitted to him. Because the Prophet said in a hadith, Sallimu alayya. فَإِنَّ تَسْلِيمَكُمْ يَبْلُغُنِي أَيُّ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتْ The messenger said, send your prayers upon me, uh, your, your salutations, your salams, for indeed they will reach me from wherever you are. They will reach me from wherever you are. And that's why the scholars, they say it's a mistake that people say to other people who are going to Umrah, they say to them, remember to give my salam to the messenger. Somebody who's going to Umrah, other people say to them, remember to give my salam to the messenger as well. Take my salam to the messenger too. And that is incorrect because a person should do the salams Upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from wherever you may be. And it is sent to the messenger, transmitted to the messenger. And you should not ask somebody take my salam to the messenger. You can do it from where you are. And it will be transmitted and taken to the messenger. Wa rahmatullahi and the mercy of Allah. And then, Assalamu alayna, may the peace be upon us and the safety upon us. Wa ala ibadillahi salihin, and upon the righteous servants of Allah. And then you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. And that is, of course, the testimony I testify. That there is none who deserves to be worshipped in truth except Allah. And that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Then after you've done that tashahud, are you supposed to do the next part as well? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin. Imagine you're praying dhuhr. After the tashahud, are you supposed to add on that as well? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, are you supposed to add on that section or not? Some scholars, they say, if you're in the jama'ah praying behind the imam, and the imam is taking his time, you can say that part as well. But other scholars, they say, no, that part is only in the final tashahud. In the last tashahud, not in the first one. So there's a difference of opinion as to whether you should add on Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, that section or not. So then after that you're going to do the takbir and stand up for your third raka'a now. Raka'a athalitha wa rabi'a فَيَقُومُ بَعَدَهُ مُكَبِّرًا رَافِعًا يَدَيْهِ حَذْوَ مَنْ كِبَيْهِ إِنْ كَانَ فِي صَلَاةٍ ثُنَائِيَةٍ ثُلَاثِيَةٍ كَالْمَغْرِبِ أَوْ رُبَاعِيَةٍ كَالظُّهْرِ وَذَلِكَ لِيَكْمُلْ صَلَاتُهُ وَإِنْ كَانَ فِي غَيْرِ ثُلَاثِيَةٍ أَوْ رُبَاعِيَةٍ وَهِيَ الصَّلَاةُ الثُنَائِيَةٍ مَفْرُوضَةٍ كَانَتْ كَالْفَجَرِ 
والصلاة المقصورة للمسافر فإنه يتم التشهد ويسلم So if you're praying a two rak'ah prayer, that's it. You're going to carry on in the tashahud with the rest of the parts and finish. But if you're praying a three rak'ah prayer or a four rak'ah prayer, then you're going to get up after the tashahud. Say, Allahu Akbar, stand up, raise your hands towards the level of your shoulders or ears or between that and stand up for the third rak'ah. That therefore means now that the times when you raise your hands in the prayer are four times. There are four instances where you would raise your hands in the prayer. Firstly, when you start the prayer at the beginning with the takbiratul ihram, you would say, Allahu Akbar, and raise your hands. Secondly, when you finish the reading, Waladhaaleen, Ameen, and then you read some surah, and then you say, Allahu Akbar, to go into the ruku'ah, you raise your hands. Thirdly, when you're coming out of the ruku'ah, Sami'a Allahu liman hamida, you raise your hands. And fourthly, when you finish your first tashahud and you say Allahu Akbar to stand up, you start your third rak'ah, then that is also a raising of the hands there. Four times in the prayer where you would raise your hands. And then the rest of the prayer after that, there is nothing different. The third rak'ah is going to be done exactly the same way. The fourth rak'ah is going to be done exactly the same way. The only difference is now going to be about the final tashahud. What happens in the final tashahud? In the final tashahud, a person would sit down as they sat earlier, but there is a difference in how you sit down now. There is a difference in how you sit in the final tashahud compared to the first tashahud. There is a difference in how you sit. In the final tashahud, there are different ways of doing it. In the final tashahud, your final sitting. There are different ways of doing it. One, and they are known as a tawarruk. One is that you sit on the ground on your buttocks. You sit on the ground on your buttocks, on your bottom. وَتُخْرِجْ رِجْلَكَ الْيُسْرَى مِنْ تَحْتْ سَاقِكَ الْيُمْنَ إِلَى الْجَانِلِ بِالْأَيْمَنِ so you are sitting on your bottom, not on top of your feet, you're sitting on your bottom. And your left leg comes under your body, out from under your right shin. Because both of your legs are bent in, backwards, you're sitting down. Your left one is going to come in front of your bottom through and it's going to pass through your shin of your right leg. The shin of your right leg. So everybody think about that and imagine how that works. You're sitting on your bottom and legs folded in as you, as you sit and then your left leg moves in uh, in front of your bottom, under your thighs, and comes through under your right shin. And your right leg is back there as it was. That is one method. And you prop up your right foot. The right foot is propped up, and the left leg, it comes under through the thighs, under the shin, the right shin coming out from there, the right foot propped up. That is one method. On that method, all of your weight is basically on your bottom. 
you're sitting on your bottom and your left leg is coming through the right shin and your right foot is propped up at the back. Secondly, the second method is sit down as you do on your knees with your legs back. Neither of your feet are propped up, not even your right one. Both are just flat down. Sit down in the tashahud with your feet behind. The right one is not propped up. Both of them are just flat. But they are both flattened. But tukhrijuhuma min al janibil ayman. That they are both coming out from the right hand side. From the right side of your bottom from where you are sitting. You're sitting on your bottom, but both of your legs are coming through on the right hand side, neither of them propped up, just flat on the floor. That is one of the methods. So that means your left leg will be coming out under through the right leg, just like in the first position. Basically, the difference between this one and the first one, they are identical except that you're not going to be propping up the right foot. That's it, basically. Same as the first one, but you're not propping up the right foot in simple terms. Exactly the same. So your right leg is down, your left leg is down, and it's down coming out from the right-hand side of your body, meaning it's coming under through the shin on your right-hand side. The only difference is your right leg is not propped up, it's just flat on the ground. Permissible method. Thirdly, the third method, the same again, you do it in the same kind of way, you sit down, both of your feet are flat, neither of them is propped up, but your left leg this time it doesn't come through under your right shin. It goes through the, uh, the thigh and your calf. You're, you're basically holding your left foot in through there. That's, what it, that's a method which is mentioned. تَجْعَلْ الرِّجْلَ الْيُسْرَ بَيْنَ السَّاقِ الْيُمْنَ وَفَخِذِهَا you put the leg in between the shin and the thigh. And that's in between then. It's like you're holding it almost in between rather than under the uh, shin. So that is a method which is also mentioned. Those three methods are all mentioned about how the sitting occurs in the last sitting. <clears throat> and there are hadith about all of these so those are three methods. فَإِنْ قِيلْ وَهَلْ يَأْتِ بِهَا فِي حَالْ وَاحِدَةً نَقُولْ لَا لَكِنْ يَأْتِ بِهَذِي مَرَّةً وَبِهَذِي مَرَّةً وَإِذَا وَرَدَتِ سُنَّةً عَلَى وُجُوهِ الْمُتَنَوِّعَةً فَأَعْمِلْ بِهَا كُلِّهَا uh, Are you supposed to use all three of those methods within your final tashahud? That you start with one method and then halfway through your tashahud you do the other method and then towards the end of the tashahud, you do the third method so that you're implementing all three methods in your same tashahud? No. But you can select. So in one prayer, maybe you do it the first method. Next time you're praying, maybe select the second method. Another time you're praying, select the third method. In different prayers, you can select whatever method you want to use. But you don't alternate in the middle of that tashahud from one position to another. And then what do you actually read in that final tashahud, at tahiyatu And then after that, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. 
وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد That is a dua al-Ibrahimiyya as they call it, the dua of Ibrahim. That section, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. All that section is the additional part that you read there. There is an explanation of what all of that means, uh, but maybe we'll start with that section next time. The meaning of Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, all that section, what it means. And then the dua that you read at the end, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-qabri min adhab jahannam, that section and what all that means. The meanings of those two sections we'll do next time and then we'll also do the final salam. How the final salam is done and there are different ways of doing that too. Different ways of doing the final taslim. Is it both sides? Is it just one side? What do you have to say? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Or can you just say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah or just assalamu alaikum? All of those issues then will come to those next time, insha'Allah ta'ala. So we'll stop on that for today then. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.